Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of Collectible Newscast and we're gonna keep on looking at the New York City Comic Con and we're going to focus today on Super 7's booth. Let's begin! <laughs> Let's start with Disney Ultimates Wave 4 and we got to see some unpainted prototypes of Jack Skellington and his dapper soft goods jacket and we got to see also Sally with soft goods dress really really nice but the figure that stole the show in that line was of course Oogie Boogie very cool a couple of other unpainted prototypes that we got to see were the classic monsters line from the ultimates and we got to see the very very uh, scary count orlock from nosferatu and of course the metaluna mutant very very classic up next is the toyo ultimates line and i am not a huge fan of godzilla but I really appreciate all the work Super 7 has put into these big, big monsters. So they showed us two waves. Uh, wave 1, regular Godzilla and Violante. And Wave 2, they showed us the burning Godzilla from 1995 and Godzilla. They are re really looking really cool. And we also got to see a preview of Wave 3, uh, the unpainted prototype for the 1200C Godzilla and also the painted prototype of the Destroyer. So for those fans of Godzilla, you will surely have some good stuff coming at some point in the future. So next we got to see two waves of the much-awaited Silverhawks line and we saw of course Monstar, the huge Monstar, Basso, the cool looking Quicksilver and of course the beautiful Steelheart and I know people have been uh, talking about or wanting chrome versions for these figures but I couldn't give two monkeys about that. I, I never was attached to the original uh, vintage line, uh, figure line. So I was more attached to the to the cartoon version of this of these figures. So I'm really really happy about the painting application. I do share your concern for the painting applications of the faces. Uh, I hope it's an unfinished version of of these figures because they don't exactly look that great, but everything else looks absolutely fantastic and we also got to see the wave 2 for the Silverhawks line of course they were unpainted prototypes but they really look really really cool and we saw of course the unpainted prototype of Windhammer the untransformed version of Monstar the space football player Steel Wheel and the very much awaited bluegrass and finally we got to see an additional item which was the transformation chamber throne for monster next up is morphine time and of course what i was most pumped up about watching in the booth was the finished boxes of the ultimate power rangers super 7 line and boy all of them look absolutely fantastic. We got to see the Green Ranger with the interchangeable head sculpt of Evil Tommy and regular Tommy. We got to see the Yellow Ranger, very vibrant colors. And of, of course, we saw the two head sculpts for Aisha and Trini. 
And we saw the, the Putty Patroller, which I ordered several of them. The Imposing Goldar. And of course, Jason's fantastic, awesome, big Tyrannosaur Dinosaur. Initially, I didn't order the Tyrannosaur Dinosaur. But now that I have seen that absolutely fantastic box figure, I did pre-order it. So I have completed all the first wave for Ultimates Power Rangers Super 7 line. And another line that got me super excited, and you can take a hint from looking at my shirt, is of course the G.I. Joe Ultimates Wave 1 that we got to see in the booth. So we got to see the finished products looking really cool for Duke. The first appearance, Snake Eyes and Timba. The evil Cobra Commander. And of course, the Cobra B.A.T. So let's wrap up the Super 7 offerings by discussing the Thundercats. So we got to see painted prototypes for what it appears to be the Ultimate Thundercats Wave 7. We saw some unexpected characters. So first we got to see Willa the Warrior. I'm really surprised because everyone was expecting Lunatac. But we got Willa instead. Then we got to see Rataro, a very imposing figure, I must say. Next we have Krampus's little brother, Munger. And of course I remember him quite well from the cartoon. And he's surely looking beasty. And finally, the match awaited Snarf, a very controversial release, because it's going to be a single release, and obviously it's going to cost 55 bucks just for him. But apparently it brings two additional heads. It also brings a tail accessory that allows him to stand on it. It's an integral member of the Thundercats, so obviously I will purchase it despite the steep price that I will have and other fans will have to pay for that. So that's it guys, those are the things that caught my eye the most. Uh, obviously Power Rangers, I'm super pumped up for that. I hope the Silverhawks will be, the finished products of the Silverhawks will be better than we saw them in the booth. Those Thundercats are looking really cool. So thank you guys, and until next time, do not forget to subscribe, like, and give a comment. See you then.